George Bush was asked how history would judge the Iraq war, he said, quote, history, we don't know, we'll all be dead. Mr. Bush majored in history. That attitude probably explains his status as a student in that subject. He got a C. So on our third story tonight, a new grade for Mr. Bush from the people who write history, 65 historians and presidential scholars chosen by C-SPAN, marking President's Day by ranking the former U.S. presidents. And no, he's not the worst. Yes, Jimmy Carter kicks his ass. As does Lincoln, number one. Mr. Bush comes in at 36 out of the 42 U.S. presidents, counting Grover Cleveland's two separate terms as one. Mr. Bush, the seventh worst president of all time. Who was worse? Fillmore, Pierce, and Buchanan, the midwives of the Civil War. Warren G. Harding of Teapot Dome. Andrew Johnson, impeached and often imbibed. And yes, Mr. Bush ranking better than William Henry Harrison, who died one month into his term. Much of it delusional. I mean Harrison. So on what basis did they rank the 42 men who served as America's president? Effectiveness in 10 areas, among them public persuasion. Bush, 36 out of 42. Worse than Nixon, worse than Carter. Performance within the context of the Times, 36 out of 42. The man who claimed to define post-9-11 thinking. Relations with Congress, 36 out of 42. Not quite as good as his historical electoral college twin, Rutherford B. Hayes. Administrative skills, 37th out of 42. The first MBA president... Sober, less effective, a manager than Ulysses S. Grant, the famously disheveled former alcoholic. Economic management, 40th out of 42, third worst of all time on a scale of 1 to 100, only four-tenths of a point better than Herbert Hoover, the father of the Great Depression. And international relations, 41st out of 42, George W. Bush with modern knowledge of psychology at his disposal, with America's communication skill and technology unsurpassed in the world, with all the sympathy accrued to us, to him, after 9-11. Worse at maintaining our ties with the world than any other president except the guy who died one month into office. C-SPAN also did this list in 2000, and the top 14 presidents then are the same 14 now, although in slightly different order. Only four men moved more than three spots either way in the whole list. Bill Clinton vaulted from 21st in the 2000 list to 15th this time. One guesses that's because of what followed him. But the other mover is a complete mystery. Ulysses S. Grant was considered the 33rd best president as of 2000. He's now 23rd. He shot past Tartar, a, a Taft, Carter, Coolidge, Nixon, Garfield, Taylor, Benjamin Harrison, Van Buren, Chester, Arthur, and Hayes. And if there was a President Tartar, he would have shot past him. Now, how in the hell did that happen? Grant died in 1885, and other than Carter, none of the other men lived to see the year 1934. Some sort of Ulysses S. Grant renaissance none of us heard about? Or was it just the damned liberal media?